Okay, question number 16, properties of bulk matter. It's a very straightforward and a regular question. There's a cubical solid aluminum whose bulk modulus has been given as 70 gigapascal and the edge length is also given. Now, it is taken to deep ocean 5 kilometer depth. Now, you know, as the block is taken deeper, the pressure will increase and the volume will reduce. And we need to calculate the change in edge length of the block. Now, average density of water has been given because, you know, deeper you go, the density varies, but average is given. So, that is all for our simplicity. Now, what do you get? The expression of bulk modulus is, you know, minus of delta P by delta V by V. So, this gives me delta V by V is minus of delta P upon B. And further, delta V by V is 3 delta L by L. So, this is also equals to 3 delta L by L. So, all is done now. If you just focus here, the value of delta P is rho G H. So, that is known, bulk modulus is known. Length is also given, the edge length 1 meter. So, you can easily calculate the value of delta L. It comes in, you know, negative and we need to find the change in the edge length. So, the answer that you would be reporting would be 0 0.24. That is what it comes. Now, let us go to 17th question. Question number 17 is from electromagnetic induction, specifically the circuit part. And here is the, you know, all the data corresponding and look here, the mutual inductance has also been given. So, this time a little bit of value addition in the question and what are we supposed to find? Let us say the total work done by the batteries against the induced EMF by the time the current reach their steady state. So, basically the work done is to be calculated only against the induced EMF. So, there is no question of calculating the work done against the heat. Of course, there is also the case, but we are interested only in the energy part. So, let us see how much will be the steady state current I1 is equal to 5 by 5 that is 1 ampere and how much is I2 if I see that is 20 by 10 that will be 2 ampere. All done. Now, you require a little bit of expression. The total energy is half L1 I1 square plus half L2 I2 square. These are the self energy, but together there is also mutual inductance and the mutual energy is, you know, M I1 I2. So, quite obviously, you can calculate that value and you need to report it in millijoule. So, keep all the inductance and mutual inductance in millihenry itself. You are going to get 55 millijoule is the work done by the battery against the induced EMF. Question number 18 and this is going to be the final question of this section. Now, let us try to see. There is a container with 1 kg water kept in sunlight. Okay, now, we need to go with the figure simultaneously. So, what I will do is that, let me just go for a representative figure and here is the container and this particular container has 1 kg. So, 1 kg of water is there in this and it is kept in sunlight and because the water absorbs, so it is warmer than the surrounding. That is a true fact. The average energy per unit time per unit area received due to sunlight is 700 watt per meter square. That means, the value of intensity is 700 watt per meter square. That is another fact. Now, after that, and it is absorbed by the water over an effective area of 0 0.05 meter square. So, this area is 0 0.05 meter square the effective area. Now, what is the second part? It says, assuming that the heat loss from the water to the surrounding is governed by Newton's law of cooling. So, that is a nice discount given because if it was for Stephen's law, 
we had to go with fourth power of temperature. And you need to calculate the difference in temperature of water and the surroundings after a long time. We need to ignore the effects of container, that is another good gift to you and constant for Newton's cooling. Look at the unit 0 0.001 per second. So, that means you must be knowing while we calculate Newton's law of cooling d theta by dt is minus of k multiplied by delta theta that is what we write. So, this particular k is 0 0.001 and look at the unit per second the constant for rate of cooling. All right, so now heat capacity of water 4200 joule per kg per Kelvin that has been given. Now, let us see how can we do that. Now, you need to understand one thing at this steady state the rate at which it receives energy will be equals to the rate at which the energy would be lost. Now, just try to understand at what rate is the energy receive that is I multiplied by E essentially that is a power rate of energy which is received and that should be equals to rate at which energy is lost to the surrounding and that will be M multiplied by C multiplied by d theta by dt where M is the mass C is the specific heat capacity, but here heat capacity has been given and that is true because it is 1 kg. So, heat capacity itself is the specific heat capacity. So, now I A is equal to M C and d theta by dt is k times delta theta. So, now everything is given this is 700.05 this much is 4200 the value of k is given 0 0.001 and we got to calculate the value of delta theta and when you do that you get 8.33 as the correct integer for this. So, dear all students with this discussion we come to end of paper 2 as well. So, for those who have recently appeared in this I hope this discussion was very useful to get the precise understanding of the solution and for the future aspirant I am pretty confident because that is a feedback we regularly get that this is really going to be an important asset to you you are really going to benefit from this. So, this is all from my side thanks for watching thank you very much.